Welcome back guys. In the last video I went through the design of the longboard and cut out the outline of the board. In this video I'm going to foil and mark out the rail bands. I'm going to start by profiling the bottom to get the thickness down. Um, I just find it easier to do in the bottom. You can do the top. Depends. If you find there's too much curvature in the top, do the top. I'm going to do the bottom. Might take a little bit off both sides actually. But uh, yeah, I'm going to start with the bottom. I'm going to grab my power planer because um, it's easier and that will remove material in a hurry. I'm just going to measure the nose rocker on this just to see where I'm at and I am at four and five eighths. I'm going to take it up to four and three quarters, maybe even five because I want a little extra nose rocker in this because this is going to be kind of like a high performance longboard. Uh, I'm still not really going to use this for nose riding but I just want to be able to get there surf this rail to rail a little bit occasionally if I can the surf that I usually surf in is more mushy it's not really hollow waves so I'm going to probably keep the bottom flat but I am still going to do a V out the tail and that will help with the transitioning from side to side hopefully yeah that's what I'm going to do so that's part of surfboard design and surfboard building you kind of sometimes change as you go or depending on you know you rethink things um, so yeah that's what I'm gonna do so the other thing the nose at one foot back from the nose is almost one and a half and I think that's about what I want to go for for the thickness in the nose 
keep that swing weight down. That's the big thing on this. But because this board is going to be nice and long, it's still going to really be easy to get into the waves, especially further back out on uh, when the sets come in. So, yeah, I think uh, this will go really great. Really digging this stringer too. I like how wide it is. That cedar should pop real nice. I'm also rethinking about my tint job. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I might leave this board white or do some artwork on it. I'm going to give it some more thought. I haven't decided. If you don't have one of these, you can also just use sandpaper on a block of wood. Works just as good. Surf foam is one of the best tools for shaping a surfboard. So if you need one tool, this is the tool to use. It'll cut the stringer, it'll shape the foam down, help level your blank, even though it's so small, you can work on different areas, curves, all kinds of stuff. So this is the one that I did the bulk removal with. That's like a heavy 20 grit. Now I'm gonna swi uh, switch over to like an 80 or 100 grit to, maybe this might be finer than that actually, um, to this board. And then just do the same on both sides just to smooth it all off. So I'm just going to take my straight edge, my level, make sure that I don't have any gaps anywhere in between. It's all nice and level across over the stringer. I've foiled the board. The nose is nice and thin, extra thin because I want less swing weight on this. Um, check it all the way down. I foiled the middle, the tail, everything's looking great. So just check it all the way down the length of the board on both sides. And now we're ready to do the rail bands and shape the rails. Before I forget, I'm going to do around two feet. I'm going to transition into a V in the tail part here for the bottom.
can see a slight B. Just marking the midpoint. All right, next up what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark out the rail bands. I find marking out the rail bands makes shaping the rails super easy. There's gonna be people out there who just kind of wing it and just shape it uh, by hand, count their passes on each side. I don't like doing that because I'm not that good. I don't shape like that many boards to get a feel for it just by counting how many passes I make on each side. So I mark out the rail bands, head, over, head on over to Greenlight Surf Supply. They have a great guide on how to do it. I'm just gonna go over real quick how I do it here. I'm gonna mark the midpoint, a point up on the tail, nose I mean, and then the tail. And then I'm gonna join those lines using a dowel, a very flexible dowel, and I just kind of eye it. You want nice lines that sweep. Don't have any weird irregular lines to it. You it, Something that flows, even though it might not 100% be the type of rail you're going for, whether it be a 50-50, a 60-40, I would just say make sure that the lines flow. That's more important than getting it absolutely perfect, especially if it's your first board. Now, I'm gonna do 50-50 rails at the nose area, and then in the midsection, I'm gonna do a 60-40. And what that means is 60% of the, of the amount of foam I'm gonna remove, or the, the rail will be from the top from the deck of the board. And then the other 40% is basically from that point downward. Approximately, that's kind of what it means. Actually, let me grab the piece of paper. What basically it means is that 50% will be on the top, like for 50-50, and 50% will be on the bottom. And then a 60-40, 60% a of the curve will be on the top and then the 40% will be on the bottom. And then on the very bottom edge, there's also something called the tuck. <clears throat> and that determines how hard the rail will transition into the bottom of the deck. So that you can have like a hard rail, so no tuck at all. You could do something like a quarter, a three eighths, maybe five eighths. Um, for this one, I'm probably gonna just do three eighths, maybe just a quarter because I don't want, I want it a little bit sharper for it to release water because a hard edge will release water and um, a more curved edge will have a tendency for the water to flow around it. At least that's what my understanding. I don't know much about hydrodynamics. I think that's the uh, theory or the study of the flow of water. But regardless, a few things to keep in mind. Nice flowing lines. Uh, think about your rail design and just do it. Not much more to it than that. So I marked this at the 45 millimeter mark. Sorry if I switched up the units, but millimeters is just easier to use here. I'm in Canada, so we use both metric and imperial, which is just a pain in the ass. But anyways, so I did 45, and then there's going to be 30 below. So this is 45, because this is a total of 75 millimeters. 60% of 75 is 45, so that's where I'm going to make my mark right here. So I'm going to remove this amount of foam. That'll leave me with a nice tucked rail. Back here, I'm 40 millimeters, one foot back from the tail. I'm gonna do 60%, which will give me 24 millimeters. Technically, what I should be doing is mail from the bottom up, but I guess it really doesn't matter. Up here at the nose, I'm 36, so I'll do 18, because I'm doing 50-50 up here. On the nose of the board, one foot back, I'm gonna go for the first rail band, I'm gonna go like one and a half, one and a half inches. And then the second rail band, I'm gonna go three inches. We'll do that for both sides. At the midpoint of the board, I'm gonna go two inches. And I'm gonna go four inches on the second band. So two inches on the first mark, four inches on the second mark. And then back here at the tail, I'm gonna go one and a half because I want this tail just to have a little bit more float. So one and a half, 
and I'll do three. Now I'm going to use a flexible wooden dowel just to line these lines up. Connect them and I'm just going to draw a rough outline. They're just guidelines. We're not going to shape exactly to them, but they just kind of help keep you, you know, it's like coloring. All right, now that I got the rail bands marked out, my next step is to remove this first band on both sides, and then I'm gonna make a mark all the way down in the middle of this line and this line, and then I'm gonna remove from the second rail band to that midpoint that I just marked, and then remove that. And that'll be the rail bands, and then if you want, you could do a third one, or you could just shape it by, by eye and just do a few long passes, whatever you want. All right, let's do it. What I like about this part, this is my favorite part about shaping a surfboard. This is where the board actually starts taking form. All right, I removed the bulk of the foam with the power planer um, and not following exactly to the line because I want it to sweep. So now I'm going to clean it up with my Sure Foam or my G Rasp. I think that's what this is called. And I'm just going to just clean this up real quick and then I'm going to draw in the second rail band and then remove the second rail band. So that only took like a minute because I did most of it on the power planer. 
I didn't match up exactly to the lines like I said because I wanted to keep the line flowing. So you kind of use your have to use your own judgment when you're shaping the rail bands. Uh, now I'm going to draw in the middle line on this side and that side and then remove the next band as I mentioned. Okay, I've drawn in a rail band line on between these two points after removing the first rail band. Now this forms the second rail band on the deck and I'm going to now remove this with the power planer and then clean it up. All right, that should about do it for shaping the rail bands. Now it's gonna be blending it all together. Shape the tuck on the bottom edge. And uh, yeah, the board will be coming together. Just gonna mark the tuck. I'm marking the tuck two feet back from the tail. So this will be a hard rail back here, hard edge on the bottom of the surfboard, and then the tuck up above that all the way to the nose, I'm gonna do about three eighths. There, I got the tuck all shaped now. Here, I'm just blending in the sharp edges of the rail bands with light, even passes. So back here, I'm just going to blend this edge into the tuck and then I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper and blend in the rest of the rail. I'm going to take a piece of 150, just a piece of sandpaper. You can use a sanding screen as well. Just going to blend in the rest of this rail. So I'm just going to run the sandpaper gently to take off this edge and just do long passes all the way up and down the board so you don't get any divots. Yep, just like how you do the rest of it. Pretty easy. Also blend in the tuck as well.
now that I got the rail bands all blended in, it's time to just blend everything in really well. Just smooth out the dome using just a sponge and a piece of sandpaper. I got a piece of 150 here, nice and wide. Help blend in just the dome a little bit, smooth it out for the final pass, piece of 150, 120. Then it'll be time to install the fin boxes and glass. Also at this point, it's really important to look up and down the board look from get nice and low look up and down make sure the rails all blend they're all nice and even and they they flow real nice this is your chance if they're not to do some fixing up because once you glass it you won't be able to do that so look it all over really good with lots of light then you can call the shaping done All right guys, I'm gonna end the video here. To recap, we foiled and roughly shaped the board, drawed in the rail bands, and then shaped the blank so now it looks like a long board. In the next video, I'm gonna install the fin boxes. Thanks for watching and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. See you guys in the next video.